this is Dr. Timothy R. Thomas of the Living Word Christian Fellowship, located at 2835 Hollywood Avenue in the great city of Shreveport, Louisiana. We want to bring you a message this morning entitled, What Shall I Say? Coming from Romans the 8th chapter, verse 37. say to you all, uh, we are grateful, uh, we are a grateful nation for what you have done, and for all my brothers and sisters who uh, share in the privilege uh, of sharing with the armed forces, I say to you, uh, we are thankful that you have served, and those who are serving, we ask that you uh, serve with a joy, knowing that so many men and women, boys and girls have come behind you. Uh, went before you and will come behind you. Uh, so serve with dignity and pride. So let's sit back and let's thank God also for the seniors who are graduating and uh, the, the ceremonies that are going on across the nation and, and as well as the city. We, we, we are thankful for those who are beginning a new life. And remember, this is a new day. Uh, so summer is beginning uh, and we want you all to uh, be careful as you uh, go out socializing and, and the state is opening up. So we ask that you we pray for our leadership. As we strive this morning to look at what shall I say, a lot of people are asking the question, what are we going to say? Well, my question to them is the word of God gives us a definitive answer to say, and that is there should be nothing that's able to separate us from the love of Christ Jesus, from the love of God that's found in Christ Jesus. As we back up, Paul is dealing with, with the issue of people thinking of self-condemnation. When he opens up the 8th chapter of Romans, Paul says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not in the flesh, but after the Spirit. Paul says that there's no good things that dwell in our flesh, so therefore we cannot be so wrapped up in this flesh. So as we look at Paul uh, says to us, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son uh, in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of of the law which might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit so to me uh as i as i read this i understand that paul is is clearly saying to us that while he recognized the flesh there is no good thing that dwell in our flesh as well as there's no bad thing that's going to dwell in our spirit because our spirit is of God. So, so when we look at what shall I say, you say to them, there's nothing that's going to separate me from the love of God. No matter what we go through, it will not separate us. So I want to, I want to encourage you today as we dive into this word that, that uh, God is with you and that he's for you. So lift your head and, and, and don't be afraid to, uh, to go out and spread, uh, spread the good news that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world and has put in righteousness into all the believers. So we say in verse 37, uh, what shall separate us from this love? God is giving us the inability to be able to definitively say that if Christ be in us, as it is in verse 10, if Christ be in you, 
The body is dead to sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. What God is spirit is speaking to the spirit this morning is that it's important why we recognize the errors and, and the ups and the downs of our lives and the, and, the, and the bad turns, the twists, that we also recognize we are fighting a war. That war is the war of the world. And the world system is not allowing God's system to have its rightful place because what God is doing is allowing us to sit back. Now, a lot of people are talking about what the church should be doing now and what the church should not be doing. I'm not in that argument. What I am in is I'm in the argument that no matter where you are located, you can speak the word of God. No matter what we do, we can speak the word of God. And what God has done is has given us a energized drink in his word to give us mobility to get out of our seats of do nothing and move forward with him. So when you when you come to, to the eighth chapter, as you walk after the spirit of God, you will not be condemned in the flesh because the, what the flesh could not do, the spirit did. And when Christ came, Christ and put it the righteousness. Now, I like to talk about this righteousness and this righteousness, how it is the ways of God. You know, righteousness has nothing to do with your, your behavior. It has to do with Christ dying on the cross for you and I. And righteousness has nothing to do with what church you go to or what church you attend. And how many people is there and how many people is not there. It has everything to do with the death, burial, the resurrection, the ascension is, uh, of, of Jesus Christ and the descension of the Holy Spirit that now lives and dwells on the inside of you. So Paul is trying to get us, and later on he's going to say, stir up that gift that's on the inside of you. He's talking about giving us the, the, the energy to go ahead and move in Christ. So when we talk about the, the uh, spirit versus the flesh, and there is no condemnation. He's saying, don't, don't, be, don't be alarmed. And I'm saying to you this morning, do not be alarmed. It's simple. Uh, it's a simple concept, but it's a profound meaning with that concept. The righteousness, which is a faith, is what we believe. And when you believe it, it's not based upon what somebody else believes. It's based upon what you believe. So don't be moved by what you see. Be moved by what you believe. I believe God. I believe that God is able to do far exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think in it is according to the power of God that dwelleth on the inside of you and I. So when, when Paul says, now there is no condemnation, then you're going to understand that, hey, listen, I can be who I am and still be a child of the king. I can have flaws in my life. And, and God can be working on me to get it straight and still be a child of God in my life. Because now I'm not going to be condemned based on what I've done, doing, or will do because of the righteousness of God that is inputted in me. So Paul comes in verse 37. He says, nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors. Well, I like how you open up with that verse because he said, hey, listen, hold up, y'all. Pay attention. Not a single thing is able. We are more than a conqueror. I often say it at the church that to be a conqueror is great, but to be more than a conqueror is awesome, isn't it? So, number one, if you want to be great, if you want to be great and understand the true meaning of what Paul said in verse 37, these three things I have for you this morning I think is going to be a very strong uh, point and helpful understanding and illustration perhaps in your life. Number one, I want to say obstacles come 
to drive you off your course. Paul says, no matter what you go through, you're going to be a conqueror. And when obstacles come, it's to drive you off course of what you're supposed to be doing. It's not to put you on course when the obstacles come, but they are designed to destroy. They are designed to prolong you. So I say to you, don't allow your obstacles to take you off course. When your obstacles come, embrace it. And say like Paul have said, nay, which means, hold up y'all, nothing or no. We are more than a conqueror. See, no matter what a person say or do not say, no matter if a person pat you on your back or talk behind your back, when this day and time, they really talk in your face. But you are more than a conqueror because Paul says that in verse 37, nay, in all things, you are more. So don't allow your obstacles to drive you off your course. Number two, Paul was also in that third, verse 37, he was dealing with us, telling us how to keep pushing to the end because some people push it to an end that's never coming and it never will come. So when Paul tells us in verse 37, we are more than a conqueror. We're not pushing to an end that never comes. We're pushing to a definitive end. An end that we know is going to be here. Our end is that at the end of the day, we're going to be in back with the Lord. We're going back to be with the Lord. We're going to be sitting on the right hand of God in heaven with Jesus Christ. So we know the end that we push to. But a lot of people are pushing towards ends that never come. So I want to encourage you, as the old folks used to say, uh, let's not chase rabbits. Let's not chase a, 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 an idea that is never going to come. When you are looking in the things of God, do what God called you to do, regardless of what the obstacle is and regardless of how long it takes. He is telling us that, that there has to be a longevity uh, with us. For we walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And you and I cannot appreciate the spirit of God if, the, first of all, if the trials, Paul says it like this, knowing that the trials of your life is only going to work patience, baby, and let patience have its perfect work. So you and I, we got to be grateful that we are pushing towards an end. And, and the third thing, if God be for you, then the world can be against you. You have to repeat steps you have taken to get back to normal. Do not repeat the steps by making ill decisions. Follow God. Because in all things, you are more than a conqueror. Obstacles come to drive you off course. Keep pushing to an end that never come and you repeat steps you have taken to get back to normal. Those are three areas that the devil desires for us to take. But if God be for us, who can be against us? You see, brothers and sisters, when Paul said that nay in all things, the question is, what is causing you from fully going after God? What is causing you to really surrender your life to God? The second thing is, a second question I want to ask, is what takes more of your time than you spending it with God. What have you, third question, what have you given to more than you have given to the Lord? 
Let's look at those questions. Number one, what is causing you not to pursue a true relationship with Jesus Christ? The answer is what Paul began to say in the, in the opening scriptures. He had to define the flesh versus the spirit. We have to quit being so fleshly in the church and be, become more spiritual. The spiritual side deals with the righteousness of God. It does not deal with the flesh of man. It deals with the righteousness of God. So we cannot, we cannot prevent ourselves from running fully after God. The second thing is, what is taking up more than your time? If your social services or your your social events may take up more than your time than your relationship with Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, we have a problem. And I'm saying to you this morning, you need to build yourself up. You need to build your relationship up so that God becomes number one. He becomes the priority in your life. He's a, the sacrifice that you give to God. God is going to in turn be a, a blessing to you because no matter what you do, no weapon formed against you will prosper because God knows that you have given yourself to him. So I want to say to you, whatever taking up more than your time, I will change that and allow God to take more of my time than what the world is taking of my time. And the last question for this morning is what have you given to more than you have given to God? You know, I often uh, talk about your tithes, your offerings, and your, your time and all this. But I'm saying this morning, how much can you give to God? And Paul says that in verse 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, for whom he predestined, I mean, for Noah, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of, the, of, of his son, that he might be the firstborn among the brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, and whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. Which means that no matter what Christ went through, when he came on earth, no matter what, it, what distractions came his way, he stayed focused. Because guess what? He was predestined. You and I are predestinated to go back to be with Christ. So as we travel through this life, as we look at those first three obstacles, if God be for us, who can be against us? And what obstacles come? How they come to drive us off our course and how people push it to ends that never come and how we have to repeat steps in order to get back to the normal. All those things are what the world want us to go running after. You know, they talk about uh, the church in, in the new day and, and like it's a lot of Christians, believers who are trying to make new rules for the church. <laughs> but I want to let you know that only only person that's going to make a rule for Living Word Christian Fellowship is Jesus Christ through this word. We are not, we're not rebellious against uh, government, but we are rebellious against the government when it says to us, that uh, the church has to do A, B, and C. The governor does not tell Living Word how to live, move, or have their being. Living Word is driven by what God says. However, when, when it comes down to a social norm and how we do it, we can practice those safe measures. But there's nothing going to separate us from the love of God. There's nothing. And my brothers and sisters, no matter what you go through this morning, let nothing separate you from the love of God, no matter what problems you have in your home, on your job, or around your community. Don't let it separate you from the love of God. I want you to, to know that a relationship with Jesus Christ is one of the most important elements of our life. And we want to offer you Christ. I know that in all things you are more than a conqueror, but you can't be a conqueror unless you are part of the king. You can't be a conqueror unless you be a part of this covenant relationship with Jesus Christ so that he can put righteousness on the inside of you. And I want you to take this time to examine your life 
And I want you to pray this prayer with me, if you mind. Will you bow your heads, please, and repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Come into my life. Save me. Deliver me. And set me free. Give me a relationship that only you and I can develop. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you have prayed this prayer with us, we ask that you drop us a line on the address on your screen. We ask that you, uh, if you want to be a covenant partner with this ministry, we ask that you will sow your seeds into our givelify.com account of Living Word Christian Fellowship. Until then, be blessed in the Lord. We'll see you next week.